Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead. And I'm Tiffany, Liquid Enthusiast. And welcome to episode 20 of Link Up. Beer and the podcast, Link Up series. Actually, no, series four of Link Up. I'm not going to go into the rest. It doesn't matter. <laughs> not too many it's of all the numbers, yeah. We always confuse ourselves. And you said episode 20. 20. Episode 20, the yes. 20th Link Up episode. That's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, which means it's the 20th Link Up beer, no? There was only oh, one, one that we missed, a, and then there was yeah. a bonus Sankey M in the series. Yeah, so technically, two. like, balances out then. Basically. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, because it was Beautiful. a bonus. It was the same. Twenty words. beers so there. Way, Look at that. It's been very cool. Yeah. This is week four of uh, series four, so it's been uh, great so far. We've had Willibald, Foam, Alora, and now week four. Um, this brewery is a brewery that uh, we've been to. We've had. We've been hung out on the rooftop a few times Beautiful in Toronto. Rooftop. Our good friends off. At the other there. location too. So I want to talk about we that. Did. We did the location. We went change, to. Right? Um, yeah. There's a couple. We went to the King Street one. Yes. Which yes. around that time. Yes. And um, and Rick. And Rick, yes. For I went touch. there for my birthday. Yes. Yeah, in yeah, 2016. 2016. Yeah, yeah. And um, very eventful evening. Yes. And uh, yeah, this is the first black-owned brewery that we've had for Link Up, which is uh, super pretty, cool. Pretty, pretty it's, crazy, you know, though. <laughs> crazy that it took... But amazing. Yes. Yeah, four yeah. series to get to that, but it is Canada. You know, we made it happen at least. Yeah. So, uh, guys, please welcome Aaron from Mascot Brewery <laughs> in the Villa. What's going on, man? What's up? Thank you for uh, hanging out, and thank you for uh, doing Link Up, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, I'm excited. When I heard about it, we definitely had to be involved. Absolutely. Yeah, and I know we, we almost had it in Series 3, but we made sure that we got it in Series 4, so we've been talking most of this year, actually, which is great. So thank you for persevering and making sure that, it, you know, even when the circumstances are outside of your control, you're like, no, make sure we're in Series 4. So we really appreciate that, man. Like, dedicated it's uh it's very cool yeah i mean initiatives like this are needed in the craft industry so i'm really happy to be involved i'm happy you guys are doing it fantastic man it's a it's a perfect alignment so first things first we're going to get into the beer uh one of the coolest yep. labels that we have so far for link up <laughs> there, there it go. is yeah, there look at go. that if uh for people listening you're gonna have to jump on the uh the video and check this out the label is all white with it, some sick gold chains um it's just simple yet very effective um whilst we pour it up do you want to uh tell us about the beer about the thinking behind it all um the beer itself first and we'll move into the label yeah i mean you know we we did this beer called ryan not back in the day that we haven't brewed in a long time um i think we didn't brew it because i actually don't know why we didn't brew it it was kind of a favorite of mine mm -hmm. but i think you know when people think of rye beer they think of kind of old man beer mm -hmm. so our goal That's was true. really to take that you know old man beer and kind of make it more relevant and new so you know we we use rye malt in this beer and we popped it with some uh you know more modern hopping methods Okay. So what we wanted to do was kind of get, you know, the great things about the rye out of it, which is going to be like more of the spicy notes in the mm -hmm. beer, um, combined with, you know, a mosaic and Simcoe hop. You get like a nice hit of bitterness with some stone fruit and some grapefruit. Um, and I think, I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, what do you guys think? I'm excited to, yeah. uh, to we try We haven't it tried even. it yet. We like to wait until... Uh... Yeah, we, every single Link Up beer we've only ever tried... Uh, with oh, the brewery wow. on the, on the podcast, so we've made it a real consistent thing. Um, I know that there was extras, but um, which we use for content and everything. But we just so I don't know something like cool about like waiting and chatting together to to try it. So um, yeah, well we can we take the photo in a sec. Cheers, cheers guys. Oof, so it's got a nice like opaque haze, wicked foamy head. That's great. Oh yeah, and That's it's five really percent too, so it's super crushable. Yeah. Um, the rye, like the spiciness, I can get that, get that in there. It's not like overwhelming or overtaking anything. Um, and you said it was mosaic Simcoe, yeah. Yeah. Wicked combo for that. Just yeah, juicy, uh, stone yeah, fruit, juicy, bit yeah. of citrus in there, um, which is amazing. Yeah, man, this is solid. So is this similar to the original rye not beer? Like how similar is it? Pretty no. different. No, we, just we, we brewed more. Yeah, we brewed more of a traditional uh, rye beer before. 
um, which we're probably going to do again. But I think for the purpose of link up, you know, I think it was about taking an old, an old school style and making it a bit more relevant, you know, especially yeah. our drinks too, because a lot of them are new to craft beer. Okay. Well, um, yeah. So, you know, there's people don't understand there's rye in craft beer. And I mean, we're, we're, our customer base is a lot of non-craft beer drinkers who want yeah. to get craft. So they're getting introduced to these flavors, you know, through us in a less intimidating way. Yeah. Why is the rye, do you think, like associated with the older styles or whatever? Is it just because it's not as common in the more modern well, beers or whatever? I think, yeah, I, I think that's, that's definitely it. When you see, you know, craft beer, I think in my opinion of craft beer, it's, there's a lot of, it's, it's in the echo chamber, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that people are trying to stay relevant within the space. So you see a lot of the hype beers kind of driving the trends in the industry. Yeah. And I don't think rye has been something that's been very exciting for people to mess around with. <laughs> you don't really hear that too often <laughs> in the front, the front marketing. So yeah, that's not fair. really, yeah. no, particularly not in the haze. I feel like right. I'm seeing it here and there. I'm trying to think of the style, maybe some sort of like crispies, like pills and lagers or some particular like you know niche style of those but you're right it's not super common and when you do get it and it's used right it's it is really fantastic and it's like the little the peppery notes and the spiciness of the rye work super well with like the juicy tropical vibes of the um of the hop so it's like you said it's an approachable beer for someone who isn't completely you know yeah involved in the craft beer scene um, without getting too far off track, I'll do my best not to because I've got so many separate questions for like the normal pod. But yeah, the you're you mentioned a few times now that you've um like your drinkers are typically not you know newer to craft beer. Is there a reason for that? Is it just what how you position the brewery, or did it just happen well, that way? No, I mean it's definitely how you know it's by design. Mm -hmm. I think that you know it's it's linked to my personal story in craft beer where you know being you know my mom's white my, my dad's african-american so being mixed mixed race getting into craft beer you know i didn't really see a place for me and i i thought that you know to be honest craft beer was kind of corny and i didn't see it it didn't speak to me because i wasn't represented in the space mm -hmm. and i felt that there was a level of kind of pretension and elitism in it which i th think created barriers to entry for a lot of people getting into craft especially like more diverse people too Mm -hmm. um, which are already, you know, on the fence about it. Yeah. So you know, with, with Mascot, what I really wanted to do was what was important to me is create a space where I felt comfortable and I felt like I belong, you know, so it kind of just led me to want to do my own thing within the space and kind of beat to our own drum and focus on those customers who were disenfranchised by craft beer. Hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's a really that, good point. Approaching it differently um, and, you know, different language really leading with the, the tap room as an opportunity for us to create that experience, that accessible experience, which I think was very important mm -hmm. into, into our growth in understanding the customers. And I think ultimately, like my, my perspective is people forget about the customers in craft beer. You know, they forget about the people who aren't in their circle or, you know, in the industry, right? Yeah. So I think like with, with me, I've always been really hyper-focused on who is our customer and what are we doing for them? And with Mascot, I was like, we have to create our own version of craft beer. And that's where our ethos of chill craft comes from. Mm. So essentially what we're trying to do with chill craft is take all the great things about craft beer, um, you know, the community building, um, the quality ingredients of processes, the artisanal nature of it, um, but presenting it in a more accessible way, ultimately to give people a sense of belonging in the space. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we got to look at it completely differently than other craft breweries are doing it because you're going to get the same results if you do that. Yeah. You're really mm -hmm. actually using the tap room in a way that it's probably supposed to be used the most, which is discovery. So right. when, when you were mentioning that, you know, breweries in general, it's like very insular in the end. 
And a lot of that is because like there's this thing where you drop a beer and 88 white men with beards are going to line up for the beer anyway. So like, why do you need to market to more people? I think that's what trapped it. And it's like the industry kept growing, which is also why we see people closing. The industry yeah. kept growing, but against the same demographic. So there was only so many people in the end who existed in there. And then that's yeah. why you see the, the decrease in uptake in certain areas. And then there's not enough people who are focusing on the outside group right mm -hmm. in america yeah. alone like if we think about just black individuals they have eight trillion dollars worth of buying power and it's like you can omit the fact that that's like a whole base that you can miss out on if you don't market directly yeah. or create experiences to bring them in so i think yeah it's super interesting and really intentional how you're approaching it and it's like experience driven like experience led yeah. more so yeah and like you have to do it right like to your yeah. point i think the reason that more craft breweries don't do it is because it's not that they don't know that there's a problem, but they're not, they don't see themselves in the way that outsiders see themselves in the space. Mm -hmm. So they intuitively don't know how to fix it, yeah. you know, and also, I don't really think it's their job necessarily to fix it. I think that, you know, with mascot and I've been a lot more vocal as of late to get myself out there where I'm usually more behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. It's like, you have to have representation for people to see it outside. They'd be like, okay, cool. I fuck with that because yeah. I see myself in the space. Yeah. That guy looks like me or that woman looks like me or whoever. And it inspires them more. Yeah. You know, it's more inspirational that they can, because they, it's relevant to them. Yeah. That's so, so true. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. going. No. So, I mean, I think that there, there is, and to the customer pool, Mm -hmm. it's very small yeah. and I think a lot of craft breweries are are struggling you know because they've only been focused you know on that very specific group of customers um, that are saturated with offerings right yes. so as a brewery you need to stand for something more than that and you have to have um, you have to have purpose involved in what you're doing and that purpose is about bringing value to actual people in their lives, enriching their lives, bringing value to them, um, not to yourself, not being like, oh, cool, I brewed this triple whatever and high five other brewers, yay. And the customers being like, where do, well, cool, like what, I, I can't drink this, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, so it's kind of that realization where there, there's, I'm not saying that it's ego, um, but it's hard to kind of step outside of your own wants and needs and what you what you like to create something that's bigger than that right mm -hmm. and I, I like to say you know to a lot of brewers who are very passionate about the product which they should be but it's about the overall business mm -hmm. not just the beer yeah you have to have the beer and the beer is part of your business yeah. right people buy the business they don't just buy the the, the one product the commodity of it, right yeah hmm. So, you know, that's been that's been my perspective and I'm very, you know, passionate about brand and I'm very passionate about these things. And I think because I want to ultimately I enjoy when someone drinks a mascot and they like it, um, that makes me happy. And I enjoy when, you know, I look out in the tap room and it's all different people like who would who wouldn't normally actually be drinking craft beer. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. that makes me happy, too, like, you know when we're doing some of these parties um, and a lot of these people don't drink craft beer and they're drinking and they're like, wow, like I really like this. And it's like, you know, see, like it's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Flavorful. It's tasty. Um, and it's less intimidating for them than when it's in a space. And I don't like to use words like safe space and stuff like that. Cause I feel like things like that are kind of a bit overused, overused, but it is essentially a space that they feel comfortable where they can experiment um, and they don't have those barriers to entry for them. To, to mm. try things and not feel dumb. Mm. Yeah, right. you're so right. We first discovered you just for context to support what you're saying. Our friends are Rick and Paul from Sweet Touch Foundation, mm. the two DJs. We were managing them at the time and we ran their social media. We have a social media oh, cool. agency. Yeah. And cool. we met you that night, but it was super late in the night. It was very brief because we had the podcast, but it only just started. We weren't even really interviewing people much. And um, we went there multiple times to the rooftop on the old. Um, the first spot yeah. mm -hmm. and they had their crowd there. And even at the time when I sort of, you know, we hadn't been to as many, bro, we were still pretty deep in it, but the, I knew that the people that were there absolutely were not craft beer people. And because yeah. their parties were so fire, they had such a strong following that obviously 
you and your team put it, are putting on these events to attract this whole new crowd, then it comes back to exactly what you're talking about. Just want to support what you were talking about, the parties, because yeah. we experienced that. And then we were like, when our friend, they invited us to come to Masco, we we're like, oh, what's this about? What's going on? Yeah. You know, because we lived in Montreal at the time and we we're like, oh shit, this is sick. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a really good vibe because we come from that before beer. Yeah. Right. So that's our sort of natural environment. Yeah, to, yeah, that's our environment, but they're drinking the beer. That's that we like, also yeah, are into. Yeah, it's an interesting hybrid all of a sudden. They don't always to, clash. Yeah, yeah. In a good way. They rarely. Very rarely. Yeah, they rarely. We, we usually are the only yeah. hip. You go to any brewery, I, we you know, visit a lot, interview a lot, and it's 98% of the time there's some sort of metal or hard rock or something playing in there. Like, yeah. very right. rarely that. So to experience our music in a brewery, setting yeah yeah was like mind blowing <laughs> and it was a rooftop in the middle of toronto in july yeah. like it's fire man. yeah so yeah you've really cultivated something special yeah i mean and i appreciate that thank you i think it's been a lot of a lot of a lot of work and effort and that was a really special location too and you know actually a lot of people told me not to do it there they said i was going to fail right and okay. i was like no like the city needs this right like it needs yeah. this or needs this laid back dope spot um and i always viewed craft beer as you know you're a maker of something you know mm -hmm. and you want to be where you're making the thing and i yeah. thought that that added to the appeal you know i think when you just focus on the beer itself you're in trouble mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's about so much more than that right yeah. i mean yeah. yes you have to have dope beer it has to be proper that's a part of it but if that's the only thing you're concerned about and that's the only thing you think about it's not enough yeah it's, it's interesting what you're saying and it's kind of like a more fundamental issue that we've talked about in craft beer. It's, this has nothing to do with diversity of beer. Kind of, it does touch on that, yeah. but it's like the lack of like, say mark real marketing that actually goes into it. And like the things that you're mentioning where it's like, it's not just about the product. It's literally what a marketing in-house marketing team would be thinking about. Cause they'd be like the customer, how does the customer feel? How are we doing solutions for the customer? But because right. craft is like started as an art, it's more always thinking about like, I'm producing this beautiful art and then people gravitate towards it, but doesn't help you expand is the only thing. That's why a marketing team generally comes in or you have to be thinking right. about the marketing or business lens in terms of like, how are we going to reach more people so that they love and find us? And yeah. hundred percent. I mean, you know, I think that works in, a, in an environment that's not saturated where you can get away with it. Mm -hmm. But as more and more breweries open and a lot of brewers are, are brewing high quality beer. Yeah. It's yeah. not enough. You can't just brew high quality beer. Like, what do you guys do? Well, we brew, we brew great beer. I'm like, okay, cool. But, and, and what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what right. Yeah. Uh, it's just not enough. But I think, you know, in, in beer, you're seeing now too, a lot of people don't realize if you just have a tap room in beer, or sorry, if you just have like uh, distribution in beer without a tap room, you're going to be struggling for a long time and you might not make it. You probably won't um, because the whole supply chain in beer has become increasingly expensive. So all the ingredients in beer cost more money. Um, all the raw materials in beer cost more money and you're going to have to charge more for your product. You know, and that's a premium product that people are spending their hard earned money on. Yeah. They got to get some kind of emotional fulfillment out of that too. Hundred percent. It has to be. It starts becoming like brand love, yeah, and a bit of like love for the company because there's so much good product out there. Yeah, and, and there is. There's so much good beer compared to we all know like back yeah. like ten years ago or something. Oh yeah, it was just like two people who were like making great beer or something like right. that. Like, you can have a chokehold back then. Mm. Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. So there has to be more too. That there could be more meat to the brand mm -hmm. and something that you align with. Just like, you know, maybe like streetwear or something, you know, you have a brand that you really love or whatever, and you rep that heavy, it's kind of got to be the same. Even though the, the interesting part is that with beer, it's almost um, promiscuous as far as like, the point is to try as many different ones from as many different places as possible. But you're always going to have your favorites and you're always going to have these other ones that, are, yeah. that'll, that you connect with on a deeper level, which I guess is what it comes yeah. down to. It's the same tried yeah. and true marketing and business principles that... Like we're saying, the breweries typically don't look at, and then that unfortunately overlooks a whole market, which is arguably the majority of people. Like you know, beer and white dudes are the can't possibly be the the majority of people. <laughs> as there's genders, there's every other ethnicity on the planet that yeah. don't 
and it's for them. It's just not marketed to them. And that's where yeah. kind of this conversation comes in. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to derail this too much because this is fantastic. These are gems <laughs> we're getting here. Yeah. I want to just quickly talk about the, I really feel like this uh, artwork is so fire. We just, I'd love to just get your take on it, bro. Like you're thinking behind it from the team. So we get that. Uh... Well, you know, I, I, I was thinking about Cuban <laughs> link, Cuban link mafia. Yeah. Was, <laughs> was what my, my brain was. I'm like, how do we show links? And it's like links, chains, you know, mm. gold chains links yeah. like that was the inspiration of that i love that yeah i love that yeah it's as perfect. soon as i was like straight up i'm like straight up links like i was like yeah. no, i was like link yeah, yeah chain <laughs> it like immediately i'm like yeah that's just perfect and it's like so bold that's why because just like against like the white background like the thick font and the gold Stood out. just like in gold. the six pack yeah um just straight away you just see you're like oh shit like that yeah. is so i feel like and only uh, to be honest if it wasn't you who did this it probably wouldn't fly I really feel like this is something that oh yeah probably wouldn't have worked. Non-black for owned brewery did yeah. really? this. It would feel like a <laughs> what the heck? You know, like doing? you know, if didn't you someone putting... get in trouble in the U.S.? They had like some can that was so like, what do you even? You know, you know, breweries can get in trouble because you get into yeah. an area that's not yours to try to get into. And I remember yeah. some brewery got in trouble. It was like a crip. They tried to do like a crip something or like bad oh, no. something. It was last oh, year. Yeah. And they got destroyed. They got destroyed, <laughs> um, as they should have. But yeah, that it is. Yeah. It would only work for you. That's why I was like, yeah, you showed up at one thousand percent with that. It just feels so good. Yeah. Right. No, no, it's perfect. I know Tio from Crowns and Hops. I think you you must know. You guys know each other at all? Because I feel like he, no, 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 specifically. So he's a good friend of ours, and he said, uh, like, he mentioned something to us about there's a, a sort of a bit of an epidemic for a while, at least in California, of like breweries putting like Biggie and stuff on cans that obviously had nobody of the culture involved in the brewery. So it was, it's, you know, cultural appropriation is an interesting term, but like I, that right. seems pretty clear cut that that's what was happening. Right. And, you know, th- this is like this type of change very much, you know, and the way it was presented on the can is very much tied with the black and hip hop culture. So it was, you know, it's, it's dope that you sort of represented that and were authentic to yourself and to your brewery and to everything that you've just described to us, like what you're trying to portray yeah. to mm-hmm. people, man. It's, it's, it just works. As we started, I'm like, that's exactly <laughs> what the can needed to be. I'm, yeah. I'm really passionate about the whole art art direction of what we do and in, 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 in the can art. Um, I think that it's fun, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's just fun. Like before I had the brewery, I had, I had clubs and stuff too. And we used to do event flyers and things like that. And okay. I always had a lot of fun with the event flyers yeah. and I kind of carried that into the beer labels, you know? I love that. Yeah. Do you provide yeah. direction or you make them? What's the, yeah. Did, how did this one come to be? Was it yourself? Was it your team? Mm-hmm. Or... Well, no, I don't really, it's me. I am, but I have oh, basically, I have a couple different designers who I work with and I'll come up with an idea. Nice. Um, I'll get a couple reference images. I'll send it over to them and then say, you work their magic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. this. It's perfect. Oh uh, yeah. Love it. Um, even like, I was just like saying the branding throughout. I was like, even the, I only saw him on the camera, but you met him. I was like, there was like some fly dude like walking up to our door who I saw on the camera who came and like dropped it off. I'm like, who's this fly guy walking up to the camera? So I feel like even your employees like look really fly. I just feel like yeah. everything is staying consistent yeah, cool. across the board. I didn't yeah. mean to, but I just remember being like, there's like, yeah, this guy just looked like really like well dressed and came up to the thing. It just looked cool. Yeah, it was just super um, well, super nice. And like, it was just cool. And you know, yeah. obviously Jay, we've been dealing with is super cool. And anytime I've been to the brew pub, like, been there a few times the one on king street we went with shahan from lost craft for like a couple of years ago just before pandemic and we just hung out there for a few hours and got talking to the bartender and, yeah, the and all the employees around. were flat everyone was super <laughs> like just cool yeah 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 did you have like you had a question on just like there oh no i was like i felt like when i was talking about marketing branding i feel like it's going all the way like through to like even yeah just yeah, yeah people who work is very cool you, you have to you have to make your values actionable within your the decisions that you make within your business Mm-hmm. You know, so that's just part of the strategy of it, you know, so you come up with your strategy that's going to be centered around your, your mission and your vision of what you want to accomplish. Yeah. And you're, you're then going to now incorporate that into, you know, your people strategy, into your marketing, your sales, um, you know, your IT, your operations, everything yeah. has to be focused on, you know, that value prop position that you have through that lens. So in the hiring with mascot, you know, we had to represent a diverse community in our staff mm-hmm. to communicate that message um, to people coming into the space. 
you know, because no one wants to come to a spot who already feels intimidated. Of course. The industry that's, you know, whitewashed and they don't see any, any people, anybody part of their tribe that are there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think, and that this is why I think it's so important with LinkUp that you guys are doing the good work is you're, you're giving breweries access to those people, which is so important because they're like unicorns, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, I interviewed a black sales rep and I'm like, dude, you're like a unicorn. He's like, no, you're like a unicorn. I'm like, hey, you're a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it's that's true beautiful. though, you know? Um, yeah. And I, yeah, that's why I'm really, really, you know, applaud you guys. I think it's awesome. Um, it's an awesome initiative. And I think hiring is so difficult, you know? Um, but I've seen as of late, and, and this is when I've started to kind of transition into promoting the black owned more. Mm -hmm. People have been coming. Mm -hmm. you know, that signals up and, yeah. and people are coming who are like, yo, finally, like someone who's looked like us doing this thing that I feel comfortable coming and, and, and you know, participating in. And I think that that's so cool to see, but it, it took me a while to be able to find my confidence to be able to own it because oh. I like other people was trying to belong in the space that I didn't belong to. Oh. And the difference with me is being an entrepreneur, I'm like, fuck this. I'm gonna create my own space. Mm. You know, I like to say, build your own table because it's not about asking for permission. It's not about saying, Hey, can I, can I join in? It's about taking your own uniqueness and using that to kind of catapult yourself into, into another group of people who probably feel the same way you do. Right. 100%. What made you not feel confident enough then to be more vocal about that side of the business in the beginning where you just not one thought it might ruffle feathers or something or, and like you said, you did play the background for a bit and you went like, you know, that's a deeper, that's a deeper question for me because you know, when I grew up in a very, you know, white area and I've had to assimilate my whole life. And I think that that was part of my story and part of my evolution, because really your business is, a, is an evolution of yourself. True. Right. You got to evolve for your business to evolve for a leader. And I did evolve as a person really embracing myself more and accepting myself more and saying, yo, you know, fuck this. I'm not going to try to do it to, to, to just to be, to belong. I'm going to do it the way that I think it should be done. And that takes, you know, it, it takes a lot of courage to be able to finally say that to yourself and then ultimately, it's your business too. So yeah. it's your money on the line, your livelihood. And you got to be willing to take that leap of faith as well. And in the beginning, I wasn't sure. Like I knew like the missions always really stayed true and the same, but I didn't like, now I have more of a def definition of it. I had the feeling and the feels of it before. And, and then I've been able to kind of now move into a way where I can articulate it better. Mm. Um, you know, but as in that transition of myself, I've been able to come into myself more and then mascots been able to come in to follow my, my lead in that. Mm -hmm. you know? And it wasn't out of fear or people, me thinking I was going to ruffle feathers. It was just that I was just unsure what I was really going to say or, or, you know, kind of what, what it was about. Hmm. Yeah. I like that. So That's real. Some reflection. Yeah, yeah. It took some reflection and, um, you know, really it all kind of started to materialize over the pandemic. Cause I was always go, 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 go. Yeah. And then when it stopped, I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to start working on my business instead of in it. Whew. And, you know, yeah. speaking, I, I really started, speaking our language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you gotta, it's so hard to do, you know, when you bootstrap something and you're doing all the things, it's so hard to like get yourself that free time where you can have time to think and read. And I'm a big reader. I love reading. Um, like I read every day and I have kids too. So it's because it's so much harder to get your own time. Mm -hmm. Um, but just little by little, you know, just little atomic habits, like yeah. 30 minutes, minutes, I get my read in, you know, yeah, some days I'll get it. Yeah. Yes. But I just make sure I do it every day, just a little bit. Good yeah. I love that's that. when I, work on, that's when I work on the business is like those first thing in the morning, I got a good 30 minutes to myself. I'll work on the business. Mm. I like that, man.
that's yeah. uh, that's dope. Yeah, we read that James Clear book we did like the other year. It was love that, super, love that super book. cool. Yeah. I like the idea of like the habit stacking. We like, were talking about it the other, the the other treadmill, day. and then we were like, we were talking about it because I was like, okay, the only success I'll have is like I need to listen to Audible and then be on the treadmill right. at the same time, so that way I could just yeah stack stack two things and go that way. But yeah, he, that book's really was really important read for us. I would say too. Yeah. And then working in your business, working on your business, not in your business, because we all get stuck in that. And brewers would all relate to that too. It's just like. You're always yeah. going to start, generally, you're not going to start with a ton of money and be able to flood yourself with employees and operations and all that. You're learning as you go. So, yeah. Oh, like, yeah, we had no money. Like, you know, we were able to kind of grind our way through. Um, you know, I came to the city with nothing and have kind of been able to just build, steady build, build, build. You know, breweries are so damn expensive. Like yeah. everything you do, anything you touch, it's like it's so expensive. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we were definitely underfunded when we, when we got into it, but I'm that, you know, a lot of grit, a lot of, a lot of figuring it out, being creative. Um, Now we're at a point now where we were, you know, we're doing some good things. That's awesome, man. And obviously you've grown, you've got the, um, the downtown Toronto tap room, you got the Etobicoke one. So that's a lot of stuff you would need. And just come tapping back into what you were saying earlier about, you know, finding talent, you know, these unicorns. Like one thing we sort of enjoy talking about on this series of podcasts is finding that talent. Obviously, this is a part of what Link Up is about is really trying to you know, bring um, more awareness, I guess, to, to different communities that, hey, craft beer is an option for you. You're absolutely more than welcome here. So for you, like you said, from the beginning, it was important for Mascot to have a, a well-represented um, staff base. How did you, you know, what were some of the challenges you felt maybe from the applicant pools or how, you know, who was coming to you and how did you sort of get over, um, or how did you just ensure that your, your staff room is um, diverse? Well, you know, I think first you have to figure out who you are as a business and kind of the vibe that you want to curate. And then you're going to market that you're going to put yourself out there and people who align with that are going to want to come work with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then in your whole onboarding process, so in your interviewing process, so you're recruiting and you're, and you're onboarding, you need to have questions centered around culture, Mm -hmm. you know? So the type of music people listen to the type of places they like to hang out, you know, who was their their heroes growing up really understanding kind of who these people are their backgrounds and making that a priority maybe they have a cool background or they have cool diversity but they don't necessarily have the skills we'll still hire you and we'll train you or maybe mm-hmm. you know another business might be in like no we're only hiring based off of skills and they have they're very strict on that but guess what you're going to lack that diversity if you're going to be so one dimensional in, in what you're trying to do and you're not going to be able to build that culture. So make it important for your business first, and then you're going to do right things after. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And we were actually, we were in an interview the other day talking about that. Remember talking we about soft, soft skills. skills. We said what changed our business even was that we started hiring off soft skills more and prioritizing that because we were both from Apple. We originally, that's how we met each other. We worked there like 12, yep. 12 years ago. And um, the they always hired off of Scott soft skills because all they cared about was the customer experience and they wanted the type of person who made people feel good in the store. And they're like, everything else about a computer, we could train you. That's not a big deal. But yeah. there has to be a vibe and a feeling when people walk in and that's like what we prioritize. Hmm. And it just shows yeah. again, like that principle because it's like you can always train, you can't train personality. You can't, no. you can't train that, <laughs> you know, but you can train, yeah, how to, think, how to describe a beer, you know, you can put somebody through... Um, like what we do, like the sister role courses or anything like that, if they yeah. need to, but you can't, yeah, train them to be. And that's the type of person. The type of person. Yeah. No, but that's a hundred percent right. Like, you know, it's character for me, mm-hmm. you know, if someone's cool and they got a great character. That's what I want. I want those unique people. Yeah. So that's what we went for where other craft brewers might be like, no, they have to be, be you know, a beer, Cicerone. they have to have all their levels. They have to have, you know, all the things. Yeah. And that's so rigid. But yeah, those people usually aren't the most personable either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
no, not always. Not always. Yeah, no, not always. Is there a, um aside from the because you're so right? Like you got to that's what you present in your brand, man. Barrington is getting frisky tonight. Eh? Yeah, he's like really excited. For he's this, excited. This for he's loving the mascot uh, link up here, right here. Yeah, the Rye IPA with Cinco <laughs> Mosaic. Make sure you go cop that. They'll be now. Um, the uh, the, you know, obviously you're presenting that in when people come to the business, mm -hmm. uh, through your online materials that people would see maybe before they apply if they don't actually know um, who you are. Thank you so much. The job ads themselves, is there mm -hmm. anything that you do specifically, um, I mean, maybe there isn't, but is there anything that you do specifically in those job ads that, that might appeal to a, a, a wider base of individuals? Like is there a language that you either add in or avoid? Anything yep. like that that's some cool learnings that you're willing to share? 100%. So I think the biggest mistake people make when they're, when they're putting together a posting mm -hmm. is they just list um, the job description. Okay. Mm -hmm. First, talk about your vibe. Talk about yeah. who you are. You know, talk about the vibe you want to create. And when people who get that and align with that, those are the people who are going to try to come work with you. Okay. If you just start off with a very like, we need you to have this blah blah blah. It's like, <laughs> oh, what's that? Like, yeah, that's yeah. people are ultimately like next pass because it doesn't sound cool, you know. I think the benefit, like for us, it was about hey, culture, the vibe. You know, if you if you vibe with this, this is going to be the beacon for people who want to come work with us. So yes, talk about mm. your culture, talk about your vibe. Mm. You know, it, it's just like marketing. You're marketing your business to people who want to come work with you. So talk about you know, the problem that you solve for the end user and what your higher purpose is as a business. And those who know or who align will come. Mm -hmm. So just be authentic about that. Mm -hmm. I like that, man. Yeah. So, like sort of on that, how like, bullish are you on the future of craft beer with relation to a diverse both? And I know we've been talking about almost exclusively the staff, but also the, the consumer base, because that equally has to be diverse, you know, to inject that money in there. Um, for it to continue to grow, uh, you know, not even just be sustainable, but to grow as well. Like, how do you feel? Like, are you optimistic about the industry from someone who's been in it for, at the very least, like six years, I, from at least since I knew? Yeah, it's been, it's been about eight, eight now. Eight. Okay. Open it to um, I'm very optimistic. Okay. Yeah. I'm very optimistic. I'm naturally an optimistic person, but, you know, I'm very optimistic that, just based off the customer base that we have that have been coming to come out and the type of people that are reaching out to me now that would never have reached out to me because um, they never seen themselves in the space. Mm. I'm very optimistic that it's changing, you know, and it's getting better. And, you know, things like link up, you guys doing your thing. I definitely think that a lot of breweries are trying, you know, mm -hmm. at least optically to me. I don't know what they're actually doing, but I think that it's at least on people's radar right yeah um and i and i think that we have to make it so we're open to questions and and like when people ask me about you know other breweries ask me about kind of diversity and what my thoughts are and things like that you know i'm very open and honest with them about what i think and i i definitely am not the type of guy that's going to finger wag at people and make them feel shitty about asking questions or making mistakes or canceling them like that's not my my jam you know it's it's all about giving people the permission to, to ask the questions and, you know, the freedom, to, the constructive criticism in, in, you know, answering those questions and giving them guidance on, on how to move forward with things. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I do feel very optimistic with where craft beer is going now. Listen, I mean, I think we're the only black owned brewery in Canada. Maybe there's another one out in BC um, with the physical br bricks and mortar. That was a question uh, I was going to ask you. I was like, have we missed, or like, have <laughs> I not seen, is something happening or does it not exist? Because, well, yeah. It doesn't exist as much. Um, and I think, you know, we're going to try to change that. Like we're, we've launched the, the Black Owned Brewers Collaboration Series. Mm. We're doing a lot of collabs. You know, our plans are to collab collaborate with brewers in the States. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in doing those types of things and promoting ownership, my thing's ownership. Mm -hmm. I'm an entrepreneur. Yes. And I want to empower other entrepreneurs. I love business. You know, I, 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 love, I love business as a force of change, right? Mm -hmm. I think 
entrepreneurs have the ability to change things and create a world that they want to live in, you know? And I, I think that me promoting other, you know, black entrepreneurs in the space is my way of trying to change, you know, the way I know how, right? Mm -hmm. I fucking uh, love that. I love dude. that so much. Yeah. You you and I had a few chats this year, and that was one thing you told me about months, like like at least six months ago, and uh, you blessed us with a few cans of the first collab, which I definitely want to talk about that because I think it was such a, a like an initiative that you personally were spearheading. You were like, I don't want to spoil it all, but yeah, tell whatever you want to give of, of what what you're doing. I'd love to hear about that. I think it's really cool that that a Canadian, arguably, like you said, the only black home brewery or one of two perhaps in Canada um, are going out of your way to bring the people to Canada, at, the people from the brewery, the brewers to actually do this and give them an experience and, and explain, you know, take them around, show them what's up in Toronto. Like it's so, it's such a, like a ballsy thing to do for one, but and particularly because you're going to be reaching out to all these people and bringing them in, particularly dealing with the last two years mm -hmm. where yeah. travel was sketch and all this type of stuff. Yeah. I'd love to hear a bit more about that, man. Cause I think that's powerful. Well, you know, it, it was, it was interesting because I was thinking about it and it's like, man, all, everyone's doing all these brewery collaborations. And I'm like, who do I want to collab with? And I'm like, well, I want to collab with people who are like me, like people who sell, who share that story, right? And I knew how my personal story impacted my brewery and, and, and you know, mascots ethos. And I was really curious to understand if other black owned breweries had a similar experience in the space. So oddly enough, at the time I was kind of, you know, thinking about all this, um, Terry from Black Calder in uh, Grand Rapids in Michigan had sent me a message on um, Instagram. He's like, yo, you know, love the stuff you're doing. And I'm like, actually, what do you do <laughs> collaboration? Um, and he's like, yeah. Like, he's like, I'm actually in Toronto in two weeks. I'm like, fuck, let's try to turn this around. And we did. Mm -hmm. uh, and I interviewed him and stuff that's on our website. Um, but we had a really long interview uh, but we talked about kind of all of those things and all the stuff, his story, his logo, his inspiration. And, you know, in, in the whole conversation with him, his black story was so ingrained in his brewery, you know, more so than mine. I don't know, like maybe um, more so than mine, but I thought that that was very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the cool thing about beer is that, you know, you can bring your own thing to it. Right. And um, you know, we've only done one because we've been super busy. Like we just did a merger an acquisition. Um, so we were really like, this is it's closing on Wednesdays. So, you know, we, we're, we want to look out to other breweries. We want to reach out to other breweries. We're going to do another collaboration with Terry for black history month for February. We're doing that on the seventh. If you guys want to come through, um, nice. yeah. but yeah, we're going to probably do another one in in Feb in sorry after February and March is the, is the next the next one we're, we're looking to do right now. Yeah, so if you know any homies, I do. You know, I I got no shame. I cold call everybody. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> Honestly, our friends at Crowns and Hops, I uh, think that connect. would be so yeah. beautiful. They were the only other space like yours that we witnessed, and that's also because we were in LA, and we weren't here. But that was right. like the one of the first experiences we had. We were like, wow, look at all these beautiful, multicolored individuals, like all different colors, hey, yeah. all sitting, drinking beer. We're all playing just dope music. It was such a beautiful vibe. And their whole thing was very experience driven. So they were like, let's invite people into the spaces that we already love, we're already familiar with. So they were doing it everywhere, like anywhere that like right. black people would hang out in any situation, they made sure to like pull up with craft beer. And originally they're creating partnerships with breweries and then they are now the first Inglewood, first black owned brewery in Inglewood is what they're building now. Oh. Um, Inglewood? So yeah. 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 So um, they're- <laughs> oh, nice. All right. So yeah. So there was, no, Teal's from- um, Teal's from Inglewood. Teal's from Inglewood and um, Betty's from, from New York. York. Um, but, um, yeah, it, they, that was the exact same vibe, exact same principle. They understood, they created a grant program called Atrial Pills. It's the whole thing where it's like, that's the, there's such a incredible opportunity for craft beer to expand. If they're willing to expand the audience and marketing to get more people in, 
and that's what they're really focused on too. So yeah, and they're like still building a good synergy. Network. You have an amazing vibe. They have an amazing vibe. I feel like you would get along. So yeah, I think yeah. it'd be cool to to work together. Yeah, we talk about it off air, yeah. but oh, yeah, we could definitely connect you. I feel like they would be like a real powerful brewery to collab with on this one yeah. because they already have they know a bunch of not just us in Canada there's a bunch of folks that they they're connected with here mm -hmm. so they already know what's up they don't think they've been up here but they're you know oh, yeah. they're doing their thing they're really building it out they're building their brewery so I feel like that would be a perfect sort of uh like to say like nice yeah. synergy on that so. yeah I'm actually jealous of the states because you know when I did this collab with Terry he introduced me to a lot of different other other you know other brothers in the space and I'm like okay. damn you guys have a whole fucking sick community out there yeah, yeah. They yeah, do. this looks awesome. Um, yeah, they do. It's a different. A it's so it's still so small, but I think because it's so small, it's making all of them so much tighter, and they really like take care of each other, hold on to each other more. It's and there beautiful. was that festival. Was it was that fresh festival? Um, called? Yeah, yeah, fresh fest. fest. In, yeah. in uh, Pennsylvania, um, Pittsburgh, I believe. Yeah, yes. so they're at fresh fest. And... Yeah, so like we're looking at going out to that. We're looking at going out to that as well next year. I'm gonna talk with Terry about it, dude. Well, I, we I, wanted to go. Um, um, maybe we can yeah. next year. So I think that's. But I feel cool. like as a brewery, you guys would be. I think that'd be powerful being the only Canadian black owned brewery there representing. Yeah. You know, do the little shady thing, put some. Well, it's not shady, but you know, you put the kegs in the <laughs> trunk and off you go. <laughs> yeah. know, right? It's so hard to take beer across the border. It's like every time you're like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. They seem. I feel like it's harder to bring stuff back than it is to take it there. Cause they always right. seem pretty chill to bring it there when you're bringing it back you've got to like there's like little secret ways to do it like so they don't give you too many taxes and shit yeah but yeah. like if you're just taking kegs i know brewers do that for here they'll just drive over and get other half and then just drive back and pay the taxes and it is what it is because that's all they could do to you is charge you the tax yeah. so mm -hmm. if the if the festival is paying for those things you probably just build it in and then boom boom right but for you to be represented there and then to connect with those people and then that'll just sort of build the brand out across the board yeah. I, know, I can only see positive things man and and like that would because there's more diverse people there like there's more like tiff said that the experience that she was talking about was like a bus tour or like a, a brewery tour yeah. that crowns and hubs mm -hmm. did but they had another company called dope and dank before they became crowns and hubs and they used to just do right. experiences like tiff was saying yeah. so we happened to go would be there when they did like a we a went cruise. there for that reason we timed it with that yeah reason. we timed yeah, it with yeah, that yeah, yeah. and right. it was like four different breweries and I, we never experienced every single race gender sexual orientation whatever in a in that space before and it was mind-blowing and it shouldn't have been mind-blowing because all it did was yeah. look like the world outside yeah that's all they did yeah yeah but they did that and i think that that you know that's a, a position that you guys can sort of own that here more because no one's really pushing it in the same way that they were doing it mm -hmm. because you have this extra connection to it that obviously no one else in the country has yeah unfortunately hey. Let's roll through. Let's get a let's let's get the let's get the old van out, guys. Let's, let's <laughs> I love it. Let's go. I love it. <laughs> Yo, that would be a game changer. They would actually. <laughs> Seriously, um, yeah. This is this is awesome. Was there anything? Oh, I said we touched on that. Um, was there anything else we wanted to make sure we got in today? Because I feel like this is like. No, I really, I want to be on the podcast when we do the podcast. I was actually thinking yeah. that. I was like, I definitely well. want to be it because I, I want to like, do a full like two hour. And I, one you just have there. a lot of interesting. I think like on the business marketing tip, we can have really good conversations too about that and delve into that a little bit more. Yeah, which is always helpful for every all brewers and yeah, I think it could be a cool conversation. So that one, yeah, I'll, be, that's my... I'll sit on that one for sure. Okay, um, oh. <laughs> done it. Done. But otherwise, then we're good for this one. Yeah, no, this is our man. Honestly, dude, I pre really genuinely appreciate you. Like I said, we've been talking all year about this. Your dedication to getting involved in this is uh, a one, and and very much, um, you know, noticed and appreciated, and you know, delivered as expected. And um, I feel like you dropped a lot of gems on here. Um, yeah, which I also expected. Like so to. many uh, sound bites to take. Yeah, I was actually. Thinking, <laughs> I'm like, oh, was there Every one time talk, like, oh, it's twenty minutes. One. Yeah, I'm like trying to take mental notes, and now I'm just gonna. I'll review it later. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but but seriously, thank you, man, and thank you for what you're doing for for craft beer, and um, you know, really pushing this and giving it, uh, giving people who might not feel welcome always or, or seen a, a home and a place to feel comfortable, and uh, I feel like that is absolutely undervalued in the in the current yeah. climate man so thank you for all you're doing man for real thank you guys as well i appreciate you i appreciate link up and you know i was going to be involved yeah <laughs> um, everyone who i tell about it they're like oh shit that's so cool you know that's such a cool thing and i think that you know you guys can really make it make it big and kind of expand it 
um, because I don't know anybody else is actively trying to do programs like this, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's so important and you're doing the good work and, and I think just keep it up and I'm, I'm here to whatever you guys need. Thank you, man. I'm not, having, so much. I'm not having to bust the Fresh Fest, though. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be the first stop. I know. Let's all go. I'm, I'm, I'm down. I'm in. I get my Canadian in. passport in January. Let's fucking go, bro. I'm ready. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Bet. Uh, Aaron, you're our legend. Let's just take the screenshot real quick for the uh, thumbnail. Do you want to hold up the can there? Yep. That beautiful artwork. Here we go. Got that. You ready? Gorgeous. Um, stick around after and we'll, uh, we'll wrap up properly, yeah. but just, uh, to wrap up cool. the pod, where can everyone find mascot online, man? Mascot online, um, mascotbrewery.com. Check us yeah. out or at mascot brewery is our Instagram. That's what I'm um, Yeah, that's it. And Beautiful. the beer is available now at the brewery at both Etobicoke and, uh, Toronto. Correct. Is it being yeah. distributed anywhere to like indie bottle shops or anything, or is it a uh, brewery only at this point? You know, we do have some indie bottle shops that we're distributing to. Um, I should know the names of those right now, so I hope you edit this part out. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, Check your favorite local bottle shop. If they don't have it, well, ask for it, goddammit. Exactly. Yes, yeah, exactly. I know, Hala. Once again, dude, thank you so much for your time. Thank you again for being part of it and just uh, delivering. The beer was killer. Like, this is crushing this. This is fantastic. Yeah. I can really see people... Uh, who I've both for a crafty and nerd like myself, it's hitting all the spots. And for somebody, oh shit, let me just switch to the battery so I can wrap it up. Um, yep. and for um, you can still hear me, right? Yep, 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 yep. beautiful. I so we're not blank. Oh, there you go, it's a bit, bit better, perfect. It'll kick back in. Um, and also for uh, you know, for, for noobs, which is absolutely undervalued in uh, in beer, as we've said, as far as like making beer that isn't too ridiculous or you know isn't uh, overwhelming for, for someone who's just trying to get involved in craft beer and just sort of learn about yeah. it and, um, and all of that. Yeah. I mean, we didn't really get into any of that really about the accessibility and things like that, but you know, um, like balance is really what we go after, you know, I, and, and we can kind of look at the why craft beer is intimidating for people, mm-hmm. but quickly, you know, it's alcohol content, um, you know, overly hot beer that's unbalanced, um, high alcohol content, and then lack of diversity. You know, those are the main things that we focus on, you know, changing. Love to see it, I man. I love that. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. I also grabbed your Pilsner recently at the LCBO, which was amazing. And it was fantastic. So it was yeah. like, you know, you can definitely grab uh, other mascot beers around, like, you know, whether it's independent bottle shops, LCBO. We're going to have, we're going to have a couple more products available in the LCBO. And we're also launching a collaboration with Death Row Records too. Yeah. So that's going to be dropped <laughs> what? In, in, in April. In April? Oh, okay. Wow. So we definitely that's need to cool. talk about that yeah. uh, on the pod. That is lit. Damn. Um, really look, at Snoop changing the game now. I know. Mind yeah. Well, yeah, no, he's crushing it. He, he, yeah, well, after he purchased Death Bro and, you know, dropping those wines, the 19 Crimes. Um, yeah. So we're going to be the official partner in, um, in Canada. So we'll be their partner in Canada for all their beer. Beautiful. So, that was That's something like you awesome. just dropped that at the very end, very subtly. But I know. I was like, that you should have led with, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Aaron. This is what's happening. <laughs> but yeah, that's news so too. Cool. Uh, is the podcast still going or are we off now? Oh, no, no, we're still going. going. Yeah, we're still about going. to wrap up. Oh, shit. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. yeah that's I had to change the battery and the battery didn't kick back in. So we'll just wrap it up off the, uh, the webcam. Give us two seconds. Though. But dude, thank you again. Uh, guys, go grab the beer. Um, and make sure you follow Mascot and uh, check them out everywhere. But thank you so much for watching and listening. If you enjoyed the episode, smash the thumbs up, hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell Ding. so you know when the new drops. Follow us everywhere at BOS Podcast and, of course, at Link Up Beer. It's linkupbeer.org. Anyone who is of – essentially is by POC. If you or anyone you know feel like you could be a good fit, want to get uh, – you know, some more information about getting involved in craft beer, hit the website and there's an application form. You fill that out. Our wonderful uh, co-founder, Danielle, will make sure that you uh, I get you have an interview and she'll talk to you and figure out exactly how we can help you and get you more involved in craft beer. So until the next one, cheers, y'all. Bye.